Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we discussed creating your first brand spanking new 3D project. In this episode guys we're still not moving on to making the game yet. We have a few things that we need to do. We need to do some asset preparation first. It's it's a little bit different than you would expect uh, if you followed along with the 2D stuff. All you had to do in 2D is simply build your, your 2D uh, texture sheets or whatever you're going to be doing and save them as an appropriate format, PNG, etc. This is a little bit different. In 3D you have to go through and build the assets that you require uh, to produce your game. Um, um, I'm going to take you through building both a non-animated and an animated asset. Uh, we're not going to take a lot of time for each one. We're not going to discuss how to build them. We're just going to discuss how to prepare them to be exported and to bring them into Unity. Alright guys, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off uh, today's episode by actually taking a look at a non-animated asset. Uh, it's the easier of the two. There's uh, not as much, not anywhere near as much work in, in a non-animated -anim asset as there is in an animated asset. So let's take a look at that first. I've got here a simple platform. You guys have already seen the game. Uh, the game itself that we're going to be creating is a 2.5D side scroller. Uh, and I'm using something like this, this object right here, as a main platform. All right. I'm not going to discuss how to create this, how to create the platform itself. Uh, however, you get your assets created, whether you build them yourselves, you know how to model and, and etc. You you built it yourself, or whether or not you have uh, downloaded it from a site like Turbo Squid or or you know the asset store, wherever you've gotten it is perfectly fine. All I'm going to show you today is how to take it from whatever 3D package. In my case, I'm using Maya from your 3D package and into Unity. All right. Now, Unity will allow the use of of any of the native safe formats for whatever 3D package that you are using as long as it's accepted by Unity. So, you know, Blender or Maya or 3D Max or whatever you're using. Um, it will actually accept the saved formats, the native saved formats. So in Maya's case, an MA or an MB file. Now the problem with that is uh, it requires that you have both your 3D package and Unity installed on the same machine. Which is fine if you're working in the same location all the time. But let's say you decide to get up and walk over to your buddy's house and you guys are working together and you, you go in his machine and he doesn't have have your 3D package. Suddenly your, my, your Unity files won't work anymore. So we're going to discuss uh, options for an OBJ for a non-animated object and an FBX for an animated object in this episode. Uh, these are universal formats or supposedly universal formats uh, that will be accepted automatically by Unity and these uh, universal formats do not require the the installation of a 3D package alongside Unity. So that makes it awesome. It makes it extremely portable. So if you guys want to build something in Maya, uh, let's say you make an awesome character and you want to share it with everybody, put it on the asset store, you can make an FBX file and, and, and anyone can use it. So that is really, really awesome. That's what we're going to look at today. Starting with a simple non-animated object, this platform. There's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we want to make sure that we have our library set up. We're going to go to Window, we're going to go to Settings and Preferences, and we're going to go to the Plugin Manager. In the Plugin Manager, you are going to, uh, this new window will pop up, and you're going to scroll through this window and you're going to find the OBJ Export MLL right here. You want to make sure that the OBJ Export.MLL is both loaded and auto-loaded. And then afterwards, you can close it. If it's not clicked, just turn it on and then close it off. All right. The next time you open up Maya, the auto-load on, it'll automatically be available to you. So leave it like that for now. Now, OBJ is what we're going to do, what we're going to produce from non-animated objects like this ground. Once I've got it turned on, once I've got that in place, I can simply select my object, I can go to File, and I can say Export Selection. Now, I'm only, I only want to export just this platform, so I'm going to Export Selection, and I'm going to go to the little tiny option box next to it. In the option box, find the file type and choose OBJ. All right, OBJ, awesome. You can kind of ignore everything else. You don't have to worry about anything else for now. Afterwards, simply say export selection, and then boom, you're going to get this brand new window opening up. I'm going to save my OBJ files into my, uh, my Unity folder directly, all right, into my Unity zombie side scroller assets, and I've got it into a location called models. We created that model, uh, that model uh, directory in a previous episode, all right? I'm going to save it directly in there as an OBJ. Now, I'm going to call this thing here, um, I'm going to call it 3D main platform 
it doesn't matter what you call it. Give it a name that you're going to be able to recognize, obviously, later on. All right. So with that said, I'm going to say export selection. And bam, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. All right. If I go over here, and let me just drag this over so you guys can see it. In my Unity folder where I've got my zombie side scroller set up in the models directory, I can see I've got a bunch of things that were automatically created. First of all, it created this OBJ file, and this OBJ file is, is the actual mesh itself. It's the mesh itself and the asset itself. It also created a 3D main platform material. This material is the material that's automatically created for the, for the object itself. So when I go there, I can apply this material in Unity, I can apply this material to my object, and it should look like a grassy, dirty thing again. All right. Underneath that is the actual JPEG that I originally used for my texture. So this is my original texture that I created in Photoshop. All right. Those three things have been created. If I take a look at Unity now, let me close this and open up Unity in the background. Boom. And let's go to our models folder. Right here in our models folder, we can see we've automatically got ourselves our main platform set up and it's automatically got the texture applied to it. Awesome! That's exactly what we wanted. That is the first part. That's how we create a non-animated object to be built into Unity. All right, this is our non-animated asset. Awesome! Next thing we're going to take a look at is an animated asset. All right, let's take a look. Okay, there's a little bit more involved in an animated asset, uh, in creating our animated asset. This is the soldier character, the main player character that I'm going to be using in the game, the 2.5D scroll side scroller. Um, this is the character that I've created. Now, once again, I'm not going to go through discussing rigging. I have rigging tutorials on my channel. If you want to see that, you're more than welcome to look at it. Um, this is a fairly simplistic character, and the animation on it is extremely basic. Uh, I've used all treadmill animation. If you want to use root motion, that's perfectly fine. And the examples that we're going to be doing here in my, in my series, we're going to be using treadmill animation. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at this animated file. Um, the only thing I really want to export is the character. I don't want to export the, the weapon or anything else. That's all going to stay behind and going to be exported as a an OBJ file later on. I have to go through and do all that kind of stuff, export all that kind of stuff as well. But I'm not going to do that right now. All I'm going to take a look at in this in this part of the episode is the actual exporting of the animated character. All right. Now, if we take a look at this file, my character itself has a bunch of animation within it. I've got all of my character animation in a single file. All right. All in a single MA file. So if I take a look here, starting at frame one to let's say frame 75 is my idle. All right. If I take a look from frame 76 to I think it's a yeah 100 I've got myself a walk from frame 101 to 115 I've got myself a run from 116 to 140 uh, I've got myself a treadmill jump that jump looks weird because there's no actual um, Y component in the translation at all I've got everything at the God node that's what treadmill means treadmill means it's all taking place on the coin or on the God node whatever you want to call it all right it's taking place um, somewhere along these these bottom objects the what you normally use to place your character in the scene all right so this is all treadmill animation including the jump so in the jump itself i go back here uh, uh, i've got myself a jump that's the jump there's the fall and then there's a land all right that's basically what i've got in there a land and a settle uh, and it, it's all treadmill, like I said. And lastly, the last animation I've included is from 140 to 149. I've got a simple uh, melee hit. All right, so I've got all my animation in here. I can scrub through it. I can see all my animation is in a single file. And that's really the easiest way to make sure you're exporting it appropriately and importing it into Unity appropriately. All right, everything is in a single file. Now, what I want to do, I have several steps I have to do to in order to be able to export this thing properly. First of all, just like with the OBJ file, I'm going to go to my window, my settings and preferences. I'm going to go down to my plugin manager and I'm going to look for, I'm going to look for the FBX. FBX. FBX, right here. FBX Maya MLL. Can I? I can't go all the way down. All right, make sure it's loaded and it is auto-loaded. Bam, it is for me. If yours is not, check it and make sure it's there. All right, once it is, you can close that off and the next time you open Maya, that will always be, be available. We are going to be creating an FBX file for animation. All right, an FBX file for animation. Now, there's a number of things we need to do. The first thing we want to make sure we do is that we, that we uh, bake all of our animation onto the rig and the mesh. 
All right. I have a simple rig here. This is a simple single rigged system, meaning I don't have a hero rig and I don't have a separate bind skeleton or anything like that. I've only got a, a single uh, skeletal system within this, this mesh itself. Ba like mesh is bound to a single skeletal system. Uh, and there's no con uh, additional control structure. Like I don't have an IKFK switch or anything like that. This character is really simple. If you do, don't worry about it. It doesn't change anything at all. What we want to do is we want to bake the actual bind skeleton rig, so anything you're binding to, as well as the mesh. In my case, what I've done, let me just turn on my show my joints, joint, joint, joints, joints, here we go. Show our joints. All right, if I take a look at my joints right here, I have set up my, my character already to make sure that my bind joints are easily accessible. All I have to do to access them, or to access them, to get my hands on them, is they've all got a prefix BN, boom BN, and I've automatically selected all of them within the selector itself. That's given me all of my BN joints, all my bind joints, and that's how I create all of my rigs, all right? There's one additional joint I want, and that is the root joint, let's see if I can get it, right there, the root joint. I also want the root joint, all right? So I'm gonna select all of my bind joints, all the joints that my skeleton, uh, my mesh has been bound to, as well as my root joint. Next, I'm gonna select my actual mesh. Bam, I've got it all there, all right? Now I wanna bake the animation I have in place. And to do so, I'm gonna go up here to modify. I'm gonna, no, sorry, to modify. It is modify, right? No, it's edit, sorry, keys. <laughs> Edit, keys, and I'm going to go to Bake Simulation. When I click Bake Simulation, it's going to go along, bam, 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 and it's going to put a key on every single frame. So previously, uh, and I probably should have showed you that in the first place, when I did this animation, obviously I didn't have a key on every single frame. I only had the keys that I required with the adjustments in my, in my graph editor to make my animation smooth and do the things I wanted to do in animation. All right, by baking an, a, a key on every single frame, what it's doing is it's translating the information you had on your graph editor as well to an actual keyframe. So it's taking all that information and bam, 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 putting it all in place. All right, all my animation is now saved as a keyframe. So with it saved as a keyframe now, I can export it. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna export exactly what I had selected in the first place. Like I said, I selected all my bind skeleton, my BN joints, in my case, my BN joints, my root, as well as my mesh. Now there's a million other things in the scene. I had a, I had a camera uh, to make sure that my animation looked good from the, from the side, like it was gonna be a side scroller. So I made sure my animation was animated appropriately towards the camera. Uh, I made sure, I, I'm not selecting things like the lighting and I'm not selecting this weapon. The only thing I actually want to export in this situation is the actual character uh, meaning the joints and the mesh, nothing else, all right, and the animation itself. That's all I want to actually export. To do so, very, very simple. I'm going to say, once again, File, Export Selection. I only want to export what I've got selected, and I'm going to change it now to FBX, FBX Export. All right, in doing so, it's going to allow me to export the animation as well as the, as well as the actual asset information. So I'm going to say Export Selection. Bam, it's going to ask me, hey, where do you want to export this to? And I obviously want to export this in my zombie side scroller, my assets, into my model. I'm going to export it right here. Uh, and let's call this thing here the um, player, oops, I should spell it right, player soldier, so you guys can see it. All right, Export Selection. When I do so, boom, it's going to always comes up with this. There's always some warnings here. Ignore them. Don't worry about it. Just say close and you're done. Now, all that's happened is if I go back and I take a look at my actual, I got to get it from down here, uh, models. If I take a look at the actual model now, in here I've got myself a player soldier. The player soldier itself is going to be an FBX file. Uh, and that is going to contain all the information that you need it to contain in order to be able to import it into, into your Unity game. All right, now a couple things I should warn you about. If you're gonna do this, when you do this, make sure you've saved your file once before you've done any kind of your baking. Um, save the file once, so you've got it called a pre-bake or whatever, you know, player.prebake or whatever you wanna call it. And that way, it, it becomes very difficult to make any animation changes, obviously, once you've baked everything on every single frame. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that before you've baked your animation onto every frame that you have actually, uh, <laughs> that you've actually saved it once, then bake all your information, bake everything out, save that again as you know player baked, and then uh, you've got that thing always set up so you can always re-export it. Now, if we take a look at Unity, boom, let's open up Unity, and right here we've got ourselves our soldier itself. 
All right, so we've got ourselves a soldier as well as our platform. Guys, I'm going to end the episode right there. That's all I want to show you is how to be able to export both the animated and non-animated objects. Do that, guys. Go through now and start animating, sorry, start exporting anything that you think you're going to need and start saving it in the appropriate location. Okay? When we come back, we're going to take a look at how to create our platforms. All right, everyone? I hope you enjoyed that episode. I Hopefully it was helpful. There's a lot of work to be able to do a 3D game, I know. So hopefully this was helpful. This is a, just, a, just a start to everything. All right? If you liked it, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know with a thumbs down. That is perfectly fine. I am doing this for you guys, all right? I know how to do this stuff. I'm doing this for you guys. So if I'm doing something that is not good or you don't like the way I'm doing it, give me a thumbs down and tell me in the comments, I don't like the way you did this. I think it's stupid the way you did this and that and that. Go ahead and tell me, guys. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I really don't care, all right? If I'm doing something that's not good, I have to know. Otherwise, it's not going to change, all right? Let me know in the comments. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.